Hi there, it's Wednesday. This is Brian Biggs. I'm in my studio here in uh, lovely Philadelphia. Today it's uh, quite nice outside, a little chilly, went for a long run this morning. You may have noticed um, we missed yesterday. Uh, I missed yesterday. I, I don't know what happened. Uh, I woke up and it was Wednesday. So <clears throat> here we are. And today uh, we're doing something, uh, reading a different kind of book uh, with all the issues of health uh, and viruses and, um, uh, you know, things like that going on in the news and around. I mean, that's the whole reason we're doing this, right? It's for health reasons. I haven't actually seen another person in two weeks. Um, it's not entirely true. But uh, I, I thought I'd read something a little different today. I'm going to read a book called The Modern Home Physician Illustrated. Um, this book is uh, pretty old. Um, lots of interesting stuff to uh, read. As you can tell, it's going to be kind of a long story time today. Uh, I hope you have. We'll 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 get all the captions uh, here. Um, basically, it's sort of uh, uh, like a guide, I guess, if you're going to be a home physician, which I guess we all have to be now. Um, like it's got a little article here about Dover's powder that, that I'm going to read to you when I get to the D's, the, the D.O.'s specifically. That that might be this evening sometime. Um, there's a, a brain there. So basically, just starting at the beginning, um, we're gonna we're gonna read the whole thing. So uh, sit down with not just a cookie and a milk, but basically get a gallon of milk and about 147 cookies, and uh, let's let's get to this. It starts off with a nice um, illustration showing body stuff, um, you know, so look at that and once you look at that and once we read this whole book, you can pretty much uh, do surgery on your friends. Uh, the Modern Home Physician, a new encyclopedia of medical knowledge. Um, 19, and that looks like 52, no, 19... I don't know, XL2, that's 40, 1942, okay, let's guess there, anybody know that Roman numeral, I'm not even thinking about it, clear. oh, April Fool, we're actually gonna read, what kind of car does a T-Rex drive, by Mark Lee, illustrated by me, April Fool, I gotcha, right, it's April Fool's Day. We're not really, no, no one, no one's going to read that book. I, I look at it now and then for illustrative purposes. It's kind of awesome. All right, what kind of car does a T-Rex drive? This book came out last year, published by uh, uh, Putnam, which is an imprint of Penguin. And um, this is one of my favorite books I've ever illustrated. Um, what kind of car <clears throat> does a T-Rex drive? So parents, when you read this book, because I know you're going to order a copy today, when you read this book to your kids, or maybe when they read it to you, okay, whoever's reading this book aloud has to read it um, with voices of the dinosaurs. And I'll show you what I mean here. <clears throat> I'm a good reader of this book. It's a fun book to read. Okay, so it starts off on a, on a used car a lot here. Uncle Otto was having a summer sale. But so far, no one had come to buy his cars. Where are all the customers? Wait, 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 that's Ava. I always think that's Uncle Otto. Let's start again. Uncle Otto was having a summer sale, but so far, <laughs> but so far, no one had come to buy his cars. Where are all the customers? Ava asked. Maybe they're all on vacation, Mickey said. Well, I'm not on vacation, Otto said. I'll sell a car to anyone or anything that shows up. <clears throat> Notice all the signs. Summer sale, big savings, biggest deals in town. Oh, and that's when a stegosaurus lumbered onto the lot. I'm looking for a car, he said. What do you recommend? By the way, scientifically, scientists and dinosaurologists know that that's how stegosaurus is, is sounded. Uncle Otto had never sold a car to a dinosaur. He didn't know what to say. Don't worry, Uncle Otto, Ava said. He's a plant eater. Okay, Otto replied. But what kind of car does he want? What about an off-road vehicle? Mickey asked the dinosaur. You can drive deep into the forest to find mosses and ferns to snack on. 
Perfect, the stegosaurus said. He jumped into the car, honked the horn, make a horn honk sound, and drove away. Uncle Otto, look! Something's going on up there. Uncle Otto is not even noticing. But just then, a pterodactyl glided down from the sky. Not now, Mickey, Otto said. I want to sell a car to, uh, uh, a pterodactyl, Ava whispered. It's too hot to fly, the pterodactyl said. Maybe I need to buy a car. You like the wind and you're a fish eater, Mickey said. How about a convertible? You can drive to the beach and glide from the cliffs to the ocean. He looks pretty happy, doesn't he? Good idea, the pterodactyl said. He hopped into his new car and headed for the shore. Uh, uh, Uncle Otto, you better take a look at this. He's not noticing again. Just then, a triceratops ambled into view. Not now, Mickey, Uncle Otto said. I'm busy selling a car to, uh, uh, a triceratops, Avis said. Great horns, Uncle Otto told the dinosaur. I bet you win a lot of arguments. I'm a gentle giant, the, tri the, tri the, tri yeah, the triceratops said. Do you have a vehicle that might suit me? What about a delivery van? Mickey suggested. The back is empty and you can get in through the rear doors. You're a dear, the Triceratops said. She climbed into the van and waved as she drove away. Mm. Um, uh, uh, Uncle Otto? Notice the shadow over them all. What's the problem, Mickey? <clears throat> Suddenly, there was a loud thump, 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 and a, tri a Tyrannosaurus Rex appeared. The Stegosaurus and the Pterodactyl and the Triceratops bought cars, the T-Rex said. I want to buy a car, too. Uh, certainly. How about this, uh, this nice micro car, Uncle Otto suggested. You can park it anywhere. I could never fit inside that, the T-Rex bellowed. Then he squ squashed the car, the micro car, with his powerful legs. I hear you loud and clear, Mr. Rex. What about this family minivan? The T-Rex bared his razor-sharp teeth. Can you really see me driving a minivan? Uh, a taxi cab? I'm not taking anyone for a ride. A sport utility vehicle? I don't like sports. Uncle Otto was starting to sweat. Help, he squeaked at Mickey and Ava. The children whispered back and forth. <laughs> Finally, they turned to the T-Rex. Follow us. We know the perfect car for you. They're walking across the the used car lot here. What kind of car do you think it is? Any ideas? Uh, no, not that one. No, it's not that either. No. All right, I'm gonna show you. It's a, it's a monster truck. Don't, oh, he looks really happy. Mickey and Ava are pretty excited. Everyone's so thrilled. The T-Rex loved the humongous wheels. He let out a roar of delight rah, and hit the road. I'm changing the name of the business, Uncle Otto said. Dinosaurs are great customers. Maybe maybe you should hire us to help out, Ava said. That won't be necessary. I'm a dinosaur expert. That's when a really big customer stepped onto the lot. How big? This dinosaur is so big that it took me six pages to illustrate it. The end. And Michael Lee says this is, Mark Lee says it's for his grandson. And it's, um, it's for my dad. Hey, Mike. Dad lives in Arkansas. He, he reads his book probably every single 
every single day a couple of times. So there you go. <clears throat> That's uh, what kind of car does a T-Rex drive? And uh, right next to the, the modern home physician. So um, <laughs> I, hope, I hope you enjoyed the reading. Uh, I can't guarantee I'm going to do this every single day, but I'm going to try. Um, and um, I hope you have a great April Fool's Day and you enjoyed your 147 cookies. Bye.